Walkers Church, I said, Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will touch everyone once again in this Walkers Retreat in Jesus' name. You'll not go back as you came. Anointing, power, authority will come upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the beginning of this workers' retreat. We're asking, Lord, that you'll touch every life. You'll transform everyone. And we'll pray, Lord, all our desires and your own desires for us. You'll fulfill in every worker, every minister, every leader of us here. In Jesus' name, be glorified in every life. I will pray, Lord, that everything we might have lost as individuals, as groups of leaders, as a church, you restore back to your church, your people in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the people of God said, I welcome everyone to the workers' retreat. And I pray that it will be a refreshing time, a renewing time, a reviving time for every one of us in Jesus' name. The Lord will touch you once again. Tonight we are beginning our workers' retreat with the message, the release of sons for higher service. The Lord wants to release us from everything that binds everything that hinders, everything that impedes or hinders our progress. And with that release, will then come to higher service. I pray to be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. In Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 11. Exodus chapter 1, verse 11. Therefore, they did search over them, taskmasters, to afflict them with their bodies. And they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, Python and Ramses. In verse 12, it says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. That is, the Egyptians were grieved. They were sad. They were sorrowful because of the children of Israel. They had been serving Pharaoh. They had been serving the world. They had been serving Egypt. They had been building for the world and building for Egypt. But now the Lord is going to deliver them. And the Lord is going to release them. And he's going to release them for higher service from serving Pharaoh. They're now going to serve the Almighty God. In chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 7. It says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, Here is the Lord himself saying, He has seen the affliction of the children of Israel, he said, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of the people which are in Egypt, of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Whatever we have suffered, whatever we are going through, whatever affliction has been upon us, the Lord is assuring us, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has seen everything. The time has come to take your afflictions away. In verse 8, it tells us, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them out. And you know, the children of Israel of that time, they have already gone. And all things that are reaching in the scriptures are reaching for our learning. They are reaching for our encouragement. And they are reaching for manifestation and performance in every one of our lives. So as we read this, you understand, you can look back. All the afflictions of the past, all the sorrows of the past, all the things that hindered you in the past, the time has come to to take them away. I am come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt. 
the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land. That's where the Lord is taking you to. And a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. The Lord is saying is taking us away from the affliction from the oppression and from all the things that have uh, kept us down is taking us higher and as it takes us higher and takes us further and takes us to a land of blessing higher service we're going to write down to the lord in jesus name your amen looks like we well, divide the message to three parts today. Number one, the repining of hostile servitude. The children of Israel had been in servitude and they were repining. They were sorrowful. They were crying. They were mourning. They were, they were complaining because of the heavy affliction upon their lives. The repining in hostile servitude. Number two, the release by his strength. The release by his strength. There is no yoke that is so great that the Almighty cannot break by strength. And there is no affliction that is so terrible and deep that the Lord Almighty cannot destroy by strength and by his power. There is, uh, there is no affliction, there is no hindrance that may surround anyone that the Lord cannot take away. And we are glad, I'm glad to announce to you that every affliction in your life, every hindrance in your life, a release is coming to you by the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. Number three is the redemption for higher service. The redemption for higher service. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the repining in hostile servitude. It's like they were slaves to the people of Egypt. And because of that, they must have been thinking, this is not what God promised uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And why are we in a condition like this? They were sorrowful because of that condition. But the time has come now. Let my people go. Let my sons and daughters go. And let them be released. You will be released in Jesus' name. Look at this, in this section, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the sorrow of dominion, domination in the land. Domination, they dominated over them. They kept them under, and they kept them under servitude, like slavery. The sorrow of domination in the land. Number two, the sickness and diseases that linger. You know, in our experiences today, there are times somebody wants to serve God. I want to work for God. I want to run the race. I want to cover many, many territories. I want to do it for the glory of God. But then there's a sickness that lingers. And as long as that sickness is there, I find it difficult to jump. I find it difficult to run. I find it difficult to climb every mountain. Your time for healing has come. And the diseases that linger, just lingering, lingering in our lives, the Lord will take everything away in Jesus' name. Number three, the suffering for departure from the Lord. The suffering for departure from the Lord. Let's look at number one, the sorrow they had. The sorrow of domination in the land, probably in your community. You find that not only you as an individual, but your family and even the local church there is like that that church that local church that district church or that community church is under the domination of the powers that be god is greater than them the power coming from heaven is greater than the power on earth and we're sorrowful when that is happening. Look at Exodus chapter 1 verse 14. Exodus 1 verse 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, in brick, and in manner 
in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve was worth rigor all their service everything was rigor it's like but how could they come out of it that's what the lord is telling us tonight how we're going to come out of every domination out of every oppression out of every evil power whether in the night or in the day the things we ought to do that we cannot do we want to move forward and then there's something pulling us back god will deliver us from such situation and sorrow in jesus name look at lamentation chapter 5 in chapter 5 we're looking at verse 8 in lamentation chapter 5 reading here from verse 8 servants have ruled over us the people that ought to be their servants had ruled over them the people they ought to rule over they were ruling over them servants have ruled over us there is none that does deliver us out of their hand they turned this way they turned that way they couldn't find deliverance but our deliverer is alive I know that my Redeemer, I know that my Deliverer liveth. And you will see him yourself face to face. And the power that he manifests will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, but this, their complaint, there were servants that were ruling over them. And there was none to deliver them out of the hands of those evil terrible oppressive persecuting servants but our time has come in verse 9 it tells us we got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness you can tell as you look around in our community as you look around in the places where we live you can tell we're going to work and it is uh, you know we say uh, we fear and you're sleeping at night you, you almost sleep with one eye closed and one eye open we're getting our bread we're getting our daily living with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness then it says in verse 10 it says our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine not enough to eat that was the reason why they had sorrow the sorrow of domination in the land they were living and we can say the same thing in the land we are living to look at number two number two is the sickness and diseases that linger when somebody is sick and uh, one day has passed a few days have gone and some weeks have gone and he's now just 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 living he doesn't know when there's sickness lingering and this disease lingering when everything will vanish away it's a terrible situation and it causes repining look at isaiah chapter 38 and we're reading from verse 9 isaiah chapter 38 we're reading from verse 9 the writing of Ezekiel the king of Judah when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness then he tells us in verse 10 in this situation I said in the cutting off of my days I shall go to the gates of the grave I am deprived of the residue of my years this was before Isaiah eventually came to him and said was going to be healed the sickness was there lingering lingering i pray that every lingering disease every lingering sickness in your life in your body today the great physician will take everything away in jesus name and then in verse 11 it tells us i said i shall not see the lord even the lord in the land of the living what he meant by that is i cannot go to the place of worship i cannot go to the place of serving God this sickness is lingering and is keeping me back from the place of worship I cannot see the Lord even in the land of the living I shall be 
behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world and he says in verse 12 he says my age is departed it's like i'm not going to live up to the age of my life and it's removed from me as a shepherd's stage i have cut off i am cut off like a weaver say like a weaver my life he will cut me off with pining sickness pining sickness that's what we get the word repining pining sickness from day even tonight will thou make an end of me but your end has not come I'm looking at somebody, I said, your end has not come. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones from day even tonight will thou make an edge of me. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove, my eyes fail with looking upward. I'm looking and looking and looking, and yet answer did not come. I'm praying, answer did not come. I'm fasting, answer did not come. I'm weary of looking upward. Oh Lord, I am oppressed, undertake for me. He will undertake for you. And then in verse 15, it says, what shall I say? He has both spoken unto me, and himself has done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. That's the result of a sickness that lingers. That's the result of, of diseases that linger. Let's come to the New Testament. We're looking at Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 25. The sickness and diseases that linger. In Mark chapter 5 verse 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, in verse 26, were told and had suffered many things of many physicians. That's a disease that just was stubborn. I just stayed there and even though she went to this physician and that physician everything still remained and then it says and I spent all that she had I was nothing better but rather grow worse but eventually we see that the grace of God and the goodness of God came upon him and he heard of Jesus. And when he heard of Jesus, that lingering sickness, that lingering disease, everything vanished away. Tonight you will see him. Tonight he will touch you. And when he touches you, he will remove everything that has been lingering in the negative in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at number three there. Number three is the suffering for departure from the Lord. As you think about the children of Israel and they suffered, why did they suffer? With all the promises the Lord had given them and the Lord had said it was with Abraham, his friend, and then with Isaac and then with Jacob and then with all the prophecies you have at the end of Genesis chapter 48, 49 and 50 how the Lord had said all these good things will happen to them and he had said unto Jacob I will not leave thee that Jacob chapter 28 verse 15 I will not leave thee until I performed and done all the things have been spoken unto you why then did they suffer like they suffered the suffering for departure from the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 2, we're looking at verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 2, we're looking at verse 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thine own backslidings shall reprove thee. Now know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou art forsaking the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee says the Lord 
God of hosts. You can tell then the reason for their suffering. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou says, I will not transgress. You were so happy, you were so joyful. You said, The Lord has delivered me, and the Lord has healed me, and I will serve him, I will build him an habitation. But you have not kept to that. It says, When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot, that was the reason for their problem. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, it says, As thou not procured this unto thyself, this suffering, this sorrow, the disease, this affliction, this servitude, this slavery, as thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way. But thank God, things will change. In their lives, things change. In our lives, things are going to change because the Lord, by His power, the Lord, because of Calvary and because of redemption, He will touch our lives again. He will touch your life again. All the things that bring tears, all the things that bring suffering, all the things that bring sorrow, the Lord will roll everything away from your life, from our lives, from our church, in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Look at chapter 4, Jeremiah chapter 4. We're reading from verse 18. It says, Thy way and thy doings are procured these things unto thee. And the Lord is telling us that same thing today. Because the Lord has made provision for our joy, our happiness, our healing, our holiness, our progress, everything that we need, the Lord has made provision. But then, if we're not experiencing the provision of the Lord, thy way and thy doings are procured, these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it is Peter, because it reaches unto thine heart. But now, it's turning around. In your life, it's turning around. In your ministry, it's turning around. It touch, it touch, it touch. It touch you before, it will touch you again. In his power, in his might, it will turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. That brings us to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the release by his strength. The release. A day came up for the children of Israel and your own day has come. My own day has come. And there'll be release and deliverance in Jesus' name. The release by his strength. Three things. Number one, the promise of deliverance from all diseases. Number two, the power of dominion over all demons. Any demon, any devil, any kind of evil power. It says, this son shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They will live your life. The power of dominion over all demons. Number three, the prayer for your desires without doubting. Let's look at number one there. Number one is the promise of deliverance from all diseases. We're coming to Exodus chapter 15, reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, Thank God you are here tonight. This is part of doing right in His sight. You come to worship God. That's part of doing right in His sight. You read your Bible. You look at the promises. And you hold on to the promises. That's part of doing right. You pray. And as you pray, you are depending upon the, upon the voice of the Lord. That's part of doing right. And then all the commandments He gives us step by step. One day after the other, you are obedient. 
obedient to that word, the Lord will bless your obedience. It says, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right in his sight, I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes and will put, I will put none of the diseases upon thee which have brought upon the Egyptian. Egyptian sickness will not be upon you. The world, the, the, the disease of the world will not be upon you. And all the things that happen to the people of the world, and they are not able to live their life out, they will not come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he says, for I am the Lord, not I was, not I will be. It's not only in the past, not just in the future, even in the present time, even today, today. I am the Lord that he lets thee. Amen. Amen. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30, reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, I will read him from verse 17. And I will restore health unto thee. Who is the Lord talking to here? What the Lord tells you, he will fulfill. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. What the Lord has said concerning you, concerning every believer, will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. For I will restore health unto thee. Any health you have lost, any soundness you have lost today and this week and this period is the day and the period of restoration. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Internal wounds, maybe that's why when you, uh, you know, go to the restroom, uh, that's why blood comes up because of internal wound. Whatever it is, the Lord has come to heal you says the Lord because they call thee an outcast saying this is Zion whom no man seeketh after look at chapter 33 of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 33 and we're looking at verse 3 call unto me will you call I said will you call it will answer you Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things, great miracle, great answer to your prayer, great solution for every problem, and great deliverance for everyone, the kind of deliverance and the kind of healing and the kind of miracle you had never known, the Lord is seen and God cannot lie and God will not deceive you. The Lord is seen, he will do it in your life in Jesus name. He says he will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Behold, I will bring health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Somebody should have said amen there. Number two, number two here is the power of dominion over all demons. The power of dominion over all demons. Every evil power that dominated against your life before today, the table is going to turn around. You will overcome everyone in Jesus' name. You think like an overcomer. You talk like an overcomer. You carry yourself like an overcomer. You look and you have a vision and pursuit and passion like an overcomer. It must be fulfilled in your life. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21, and I will deliver thee. Who is the thee? It's you now. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. Whatever the name they are called, and they boast of this power, a boast of that power, never mind, your deliverance has come. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Mr. Terrible will not ruin your life. 
Mrs. Terrible will not ruin your life. He will deliver you out of the heart of the terrible. The terrible, wicked people of the world will not have the final say in your life. They will not have the final say in your family. They will not have the final say in your ministry. Everything the Lord has ordained and the terrible was and the wicked was has said, no, that will not be. They are fighting against God and God will overpower them for your life in Jesus' name. Look at my confession. Look at your confession in Isaiah chapter 54. I will read him from verse 17. Here is a confession. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against me, against thee, shall prosper. Maybe you should read that for yourself. One, two, three, go. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Say that again. Let's say all together with confidence, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No, no matter where they form that, where they go to form that weapon, where they go to manufacture that weapon, where they go to take a conspiracy against your life, against your progress, against your joy, against your success. Those things will not prosper in your life in Jesus' name. What the Lord has said concerning you, what the Lord has already planned concerning you, that is what will be performed in your life in Jesus' name. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee, every tongue, every tongue, every tongue, no matter what they put on that tongue, no matter how they curse, no matter their vocabulary, no matter the power behind that tongue, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. It is fulfilled. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14 here. He's telling us what Christ has done and what he has done for you for so much, uh, for as much as then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death that is the devil he has died your death i said he has taken away your death he put all your penalty, all your punishment, even to the level of the punishment of death. He put that all upon himself. And you, if you are going to buy something, you cannot pay the price two times. Somebody paid the price for you and we have the receipt already. And then you go there, you say, I want to pay for this. They say, it's not necessary. Another person has paid the price. Christ has paid the price. He has borne the agony. He has borne the punishment of death. And that thing will not be required of you again in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage he has delivered us from bondage the lifetime bondage that should have been there you are delivered i'm looking for the person i'm talking to i said you are delivered deliverance total deliverance and complete deliverance supernatural deliverance has come upon your life nothing will take that deliverance away from you in jesus name we're looking at uh, number three here. Number three is the prayer for your desires without doubting. The prayer for your desires without doubting. As you come to this convocation, 
this conference, this workers' retreat, you must have desires in your heart. And you must have those desires reaching down in my spiritual life. I want this to be done. In my family life, I want this to be accomplished. In my personal life, I want this to be put in place. And as you manifest those desires unto the Lord, the Lord will fulfill all your desires in Jesus' name. It says in Psalm 37, reading from verse 4, Psalm 37, we're looking at verse 4, Delight thyself only in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, there are people, they leave the work of God aside, and they are pursuing other things, and they have desires, and the desires are slow in coming. But when you desire, when you delight yourself in the Lord, and what God wants is what you do, the work he wants is what you concentrate on, he says, he shall fulfill and give thee the desires of thine heart look at verse 5 in verse 5 commit thy way unto the lord trust trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass everything you commit to the lord from tonight until the end of this workers retreat everything he will bring everything to pass you mention it to Lord, look at this in my family, look at this in my life, and look at this in my situation, and you commit it to the hand of the Lord, performance, solution, answer to your prayer, and he shall bring it to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 145, Psalm 145, we're reading from verse 9. In Psalm 145, verse 9, the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to how many people? I said the Lord is good to how many people? You know, there are people that say, I don't know why God answers the prayer of other people. I don't know whether he will answer my prayer. The Lord is good to all. He will answer your prayer. He will answer my prayer. Look at the latter part of that verse, and his tender mercies are over all his works. The tender mercies of the Lord over all his works. Look at verse 19. You need to mark this in your Bible. Verse 19, look at this. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. That's the assurance we have tonight as you call upon the Lord and you reveal your condition before the Lord tonight is the night of solution it's the night of answered prayer and it's the night of the fulfillment of the desires of your life in jesus name and hey, look at uh, J james chapter one verse six in james chapter one we're looking at verse six it says but let him ask in faith. That's all. That's all. You, you have, you need solution. You want an answer. It says, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. There's nothing to doubt. God is a good God. And God is the God who has promised. And what he has promised is going to fulfill. He cannot fail. So why should I doubt God? And why should you doubt God? He will do it. He will perform it. He will strengthen you. He will brighten your vision. And He will give you victory over every challenge of your life. Even from tonight, in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, the redemption for higher service. When the Lord redeems us, He does it for a purpose. He calls us and we respond to a call and then He redeems us so that we can offer higher service unto the Lord. Exodus chapter 8, we're looking at verse 1. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses go to Pharaoh and say unto him thus says the Lord let 
my people go that they may serve me you see that let my people go they see release there's a redemption and the release and the redemption is for this purpose that they may serve me look at verse 20 there in verse 20 it says and the lord said unto moses rise up early in the morning and stand before pharaoh lo he cometh forth to the water and say unto him thus says the lord look at this look at this let my people go tell me the rest that they may serve me he delivers us he redeems us he releases us from bondage so that he can get us to higher service you will serve the lord i will serve the lord i will serve the lord and as to serve the lord in a higher capacity in a higher realm great will be your reward in jesus name look at john chapter 12 we're looking at verse 26 john chapter 12 we're reading at verse 26 it says if any man serve me let him follow me let him follow me the things i did let him look at my life and do the same and where i am there shall my also my servant be look at this if any man serve me him will my father honor him will my father honor he honors us as we serve him at a level he then honors us and gives us greater service and that greater service will bear fruit for the kingdom of god i pray that will be fulfilled in your life the redemption for higher service three things number one our relationship with the lord when we're called out of the world and our sins are forgiven and then we become citizens of the kingdom what's our relationship with the lord number two our redemptive right in the lord we have redemption and that redemption as right our redemptive right in the lord number three our resources in the lord let's look at number one our relationship with the lord it tells us in matthew chapter seven reading from verse seven it says ask and it shall be given unto you who is that talking about it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says for everyone everyone any exemption i send any exemption everyone everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened tonight the door will be opened unto you why because of our relationship because of our relationship look at verse 9 in verse 9 or oh, what man is there of you whom if his son shall ask bread will he give him a stone of course no it says because of the father's son father daughter relationship that's why we expect that as children of god we're going to god and what he had promised is going to fulfill look at verse 10 it says so if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent and then in verse 11 christ himself makes the conclusion if he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him tonight a father because of the relationship we have with him he'll give us good things you go back home with good things answers to prayer good things healing for the sick good things revival in your soul and revival in your spirit good things it will wake every one of us up tonight in jesus name look at romans chapter 8 verse 32 romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son he gave him up for sin 
He gave him up for salvation. He gave him up for redemption. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? All things, they are yours tonight. Say they are mine. And it will not fail. They'll be yours in Jesus' name. Number two here. Number two is our redemptive right in the Lord. Our redemptive right in the Lord. Yes, redeemed us. And because of that redemption, we have a right to come to the presence of the Lord and to receive out of his son. Look at Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 17. Romans Chapter 8, we're reading from verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, joint heir with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Glorified together. He'll glorify himself in your life in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able, our God is able. To roll away that mountain, our God is able. To touch your heart and bring life and bring revival and bring the fire of, and the power of the Holy Ghost, our God is able. Say, my God is able. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. What's God saying here? All our prayer, the Lord is saying, take it higher. And then you take it higher. God says, I'm able to do more than that. Push it higher. And no matter how high your request, how great your request is tonight, praise the Lord. The Lord is going to fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That power will come from heaven and walk in your heart and walk in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three, our resources in the Lord. What do we have? our resources in the Lord. What are we expecting? Our resources in the Lord as a worker, as a soul seeker, as a soul winner, as a servant of God, as a leader in the church, as a person whose heart is panting after God, wanting to know God more and more. What are we expecting from the Lord? And what are the resources we have in the Lord? Matthew chapter 16, we're reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee, where is the thee? I said, who is the thee? You are the thee, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say, I accept. Say, I believe. Say, I possess. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, notice that, whatsoever, that's talking about you, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever it is you don't want in your life is been running into your life and been crowding over your life. This will come, this will come in the past. You just put your hands at the back and you say, Oh God, look at my condition. And the Lord is saying, The key is in your hand. Say, The key is in my hand. And whatsoever you bind, it will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. This is your day of victory. Your day of dominion. And your day of power in Jesus' name. 
Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Tell me the rest. Talk, talk, talk now. Say it aloud. Nothing from the sky, nothing from the sea, nothing from the land, nothing from the village, nothing from the forest, nothing from anywhere, nothing shall by any means in any way hurt you in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 16. We're reading from verse 23. John chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 23. And in that day he shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Let's read that again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever I shall ask the Father in his name, he will give it me. He will give it me. He will give it me. Life will change. Ministry will turn around. You want him to touch you afresh and touch you again tonight? That divine touch will come upon your life. Don't look back, look forward. Don't look down, look upward. A new day has come. Revival time has come. The power that breaks every yoke has come to your life tonight. And you, you think about that, that whatsoever you will ask tonight, you're asking for restoration, you're asking for revival, you're asking for renewal, you're asking for power, you're asking for holiness, you're asking for effectiveness, whatsoever, you're asking for every yoke in your life to be broken, tonight is that night. What are you? I said tonight is that night. Remember, remember, you can go higher in your prayer. You can go higher in your prayer. And whatever you have been asking, something greater, something higher, something bigger, something more elaborate, the Lord is giving upon your life today. Why don't you open your mouth and say, Lord, I am here. And I know everything you have promised, they are mine tonight. They are mine tonight. They are mine tonight tonight let him hear your voice let him hear your voice don't pray like you know before where say you know maybe you are just meditating and you are just thinking and you are just there and you are wondering uh, all this sorrow all this suffering all this sickness all this is lingering raise up your voice and tell the lord and the lord is going to hear your prayer tonight it will hold them away he will take them away. He will break every yoke in your life and destroy the works of the devil in your life. Tonight is your night. My brother, you in particular. My sister, you in particular. It will be done. It will be done. It must be done. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. He has broken the power of the enemy. And from now on, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. It delivers you from the hand of Mr. Terrible. It delivers you from the hand of Mrs. Terrible. You will sing for joy. You will have a testimony because today, from today, no power will be strong enough to keep on hurting you and to keep on oppressing you. Your name is in the book of life. You are a child of God, a child of the Heavenly Father, and He says, Call upon me, and I will answer you. He says, I will show you great and mighty things that you have never known. Great and mighty things you have never known. A refreshing in your life, revival in your life, renewal in your life, regeneration in your life. 
every sin like a heavy weight that has weighed you down everything destroyed tonight in jesus name tell the lord tell the lord release has come release has come so you can mount up with wings as eagles all the cords all the chains that tied you down and you couldn't rise and you couldn't move everything is broken and shattered out of your life tell the lord you are here tonight for a purpose for a second touch for a divine touch for a miracle touch for a reviving touch he will touch you again he will touch you again your heart your soul your mind your brain your inner man he will touch you again revival renewal regeneration restoration everything you have lost restoration has come restoration has come tell the lord tell the lord remember he will answer every prayer every world's prayer every world's prayer and after the prayer you say that's me that's me that's me he has answered me that's me he has rolled the mountain away that's me he has taken the sickness away that's me he has taken the lukewarmness away that's me new fire has now come that's me new power has now come that's you that's you that's you it will happen it must happen you have the keys of the kingdom whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven favor upon your life mercy upon your life love divine love upon your life answers to prayer upon your life solution to every problem upon your life it's happening right now it's happening right now god is a good god and it's yours and it's yours and it's yours it's done you are released as a child of god as a son as a daughter and now higher service greater service more for more profitable service in the kingdom of god in jesus name we pray deliver children of god in jesus name we pray revive revitalize renewed children of god in jesus name we pray the lord has answered your prayer forget the old remember the new a new path is now before you a new power is now inside you a new victory is now for your life where are you father in jesus name we thank you because you have made up your mind you have decided you are going to release every child of god every servant of god every soul winner every worker and you are going to release us for higher service i pray lord a release will come to everyone now in jesus name all the cords that bound everyone before all the sicknesses that lingered in any lie before all the yoke that had been upon every lie any lie before break that yoke destroy that evil sin release your people out of egyptian bondage in jesus name 
And Lord, we pray that you release us for higher service. That Lord, the desire to work, the passion to work, the love to work, and the victory will receive as workers. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Anything holding us back before, everything has been taken away. New life has come. New vitality has come. A new answer to prayer has come. A new solution to every problem has now come. Let this be the experience of everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray the key that you are put in every hand. This key will work wonders. Whatever any of your children bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever they lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I pray, Lord, the power you have given to tread on serpents, tread on scorpions, and tread on sickness, and tread on affliction, and tread upon any unseen force that power let it work effectively in every life in jesus name the assurance you have given us that no weapon that is formed against any of us will prosper fulfill it in jesus name and nothing 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 shall by any means hurt any of your people in jesus name you have given you have given jesus to us you have given us all things as well my brother dear receive all things in jesus name my sister dear receive all things in jesus name every knot in your life be loosed every mystery in your life be solved every difficulty in your life be removed and every tear be wiped away in jesus name the lord perform his wonders in every life and the joy of the lord will be the strength of your life from now henceforth all the days of your life oh lord we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray